Let me talk a second about what closure is for people. And let's figure out if it's something that we actually even really need in these situations. Okay. Closure is both people or however many people walking away from a situation, ending a situation where there is a sense of finality, where there is a sense of a real ending, generally an acceptance of the relationship ending and also the things that happened within the relationship and a sense of taking accountability for one's part in what they in the relationship and what happened and in the breakdown of it. And the other person taking accountability, right? And recognizing that there is no reconcilable option and that this needs to end. That's generally what people are looking for. They're looking for validation. Here's the problem. Okay. A lot of people, when they are discarded or when they leave or when they go no contact, no matter who the narcissist or toxic person was in their life, are seeking not those things, but validation. They're seeking to have the experience that they had with that person be recognized by that toxic person, be um, spoken about be apologized for in a whole full real way, right? And they're looking for often that other person to soften the experience of the toxic uh, traumas that they now are living with. The thing is a toxic person is never gonna give you those things. The whole point is you got to this place in this relationship because of the toxic behavior. You got to this place because the type of communication couldn't be had, can't, doesn't exist with a toxic person. It's basically their lack of accountability is limiting the relationship's ability to have any ending that, or any, anything really that feels satisfying to the other person, that feels like connection, communication, right? What have you been seeking this whole time, whether it's your parent whether it's a, a loved one or a, uh, a partner or a husband or wife, whatever, what have you been seeking? What is the main complaint, right? Most of us, the main complaint is lack of connection, lack of real communication, right? Which then creates a lack of validation. It creates dis, uh, the devaluing. It creates all of the things that create the traumas in you so with toxic people. They do not have, narcissists don't have the ability because of the lack of empathy to take real accountability. They don't want to. And even when they try, it comes out really awkward and not really sincere, right? When you see a, a narcissist, tr like a covert narcissist trying, looking like they're trying to take accountability, do you see them stumbling over their words and not really actually getting the point of what you're even upset at or not really getting to like the heart of what the issue is because of the lack of accountability taken when it's like you're sitting in your head going it's three little words it's four little words whatever it's such a it's such a basic thing and they just can't see it so it's they don't have the ability to because they're perpetually and continually protecting their ego they're perpetually protecting what they think they need to protect in themselves and they are only concerned with the facade that they're putting on and the mask that they're wearing being what you see as the reality. Yes, so, when you are trying to get closure, okay, when you're trying to, when you're seeking closure, maybe not trying to get it, but like feeling the need for it and really like feeling like you can't let things go because you don't have it, it, it forces your focus back onto that toxic relationship. It isn't about the narcissist giving you what you need. It is about you finding what you need regardless Okay, because the narcissist, if we're saying they can't do it, they will never be able to connect, they will never be able to give in that way to another human being, then what are we doing? Why are we trying to pull that from them? It's sort of like some people, it feels like a need to win. It feels like a need to just win that one thing and then, and then it can be okay. But the thing is, we have to recognize that they are what they are and allow them to be who they are. And that doesn't mean allowing the toxic to come towards you, right? But allow them in the sense of recognizing who they are and let them be who they are so that we can decide and make choice about how we're gonna do things next, which means finding closure for yourself and what does that look right. like? So the closure is really finding your freedom. It's creating indifference toward the narcissist. It's moving forward and going, narcissist who? You know, at eventually in your life. And that's a freeing feeling. I don't think about my exes that were toxic unless there's reason to usually when I'm doing these videos and that's about it. Of course, there's a trigger now and then. Of course, there's 
moments, you know, where I will go, oh, slipping into that again. Nope, don't want that. And then make a choice to do something else. But it really takes our own efforts to get there. So how do we get closure? Some ways to help for you to get the closure if you are struggling with this. So what do you guys got who have been through this? Let me know what you're thinking about how did you get this feeling of closure? You move forward. You learn to stop perseverating. You learn to stop having the looping thoughts that make it seem like that support, that person is supposed to validate you, give you what you need in this end of an ending of a relationship. I like to think of it like, I don't want that narcissist owing me anything. I don't ever want to talk to them again. I don't want that toxic person to owe me closure. And if I'm looking toward them for my need to feel okay, then I'm staying stuck in the loop of feeding them supply and being in the orbit of a toxic person. I don't Finding ways to work on the parts of the relationship that I took accountability for, right? So that I can grow myself and heal myself further for whatever else happens in life. So much of finding closure is stop judging yourself. Stop judging yourself. So a lot of people get stuck thinking if only I had. If only, if only I had done this, if only I were that, if only um, I hadn't done that one thing. It's not about that, you guys. If you were with a toxic person or if you were a, a child of a toxic person, that narcissistic person has their own agenda. They need to devalue you. They need to have you less than them. They need to control the situation. We have to stop judging ourselves based on what they planted up here. If we continue down that path, how are we going to find what we need in for validation, closure, endings, new beginnings, creativity in our life, right? We're not. And whose words are those? They're not your own. They become your own because you were told those things or you've had repeated patterns where people hurt you. There's something with trauma, especially when you have CPTSD and you've had repeated traumas in your life from where I sit because I hear a lot of people's stories, right? I will see for each person, they have a pattern and their pattern is different from each other's patterns. So how do you get out of that pattern? To me, this is where you find closure. Part of the reason we're not finding closure is because it's a repeated pattern. It's a repeated pattern in our life. And we're like, oh my gosh, there it is again. I can't get out of it. I need closure so it can stop. No, what we need is to pattern interrupt, to change the pattern, to do something differently. And here is the phrase of the week to make choice, okay, to make choice outside of that judgment. If you can relax the judgment, if you can recognize it's not yours, tell yourself return to sender every time you hear that judgment, it is not mine, okay? And then make a choice outside of that judging thought of what you're gonna do next or how you're gonna handle the situation. And guess what? If your choice is wrong, make a different choice. It is so simple. And we trap ourselves in this web of like needing to be perfect, needing to do it right or else, feeling like, you know, criticizing and hurting ourselves through those patterns. So that's a huge piece of finding one's own closure. It is a lot of talking, a lot of grieving, letting yourself grieve, the loss of the relationship, the loss of a parent,